Hi, and welcome to a demonstration of version 2 of my uh, glockenspiel for Sonic Pi. As you can see in this version, I now have the hammers overhead on the glockenspiel. And I've also got a, a new glockenspiel. Uh, this is a modern one. Uh, it's a model PP1130 um, produced by Plus Percussion. And it conveniently sits underneath the keys and can be uh, moved out of the way if you want. Uh, just leaving the key assembly there. Uh, the main difference with this key assembly you can see is that I've got a series of springs supporting the keys and uh, I couldn't find any to buy. Uh, I could only buy assorted packets of various springs so I actually just wound my own out of some um, wire I had about 0.067 millimeters, I think it is. I wound it around a barrow and it conveniently sits in the slots at the uh, end of a Lego pin and is supported on the Lego beam underneath. And so we have the, um, the, the keys set up there, there's 13 of them, and they're all spaced apart on a grid of about four uh, Lego stud separation. Although you'll notice when we get to here that there's two which are close together, and that's because the spacing is slightly too wide, and so to bring it back into sync with the um, block and spiel, um, I readjust them at this point so that they come over the keys once again. There is a fair bit of leeway, so it's not too bad. As far as the circuitry is concerned, it's similar to what I had before. The only difference being that I now use two of the driver chips uh, instead of one. I had uh, a couple of uh, transistors for the other two um, keys, but this time I've got 30 instead of 11 keys, so I've switched to using two of the driver chips, which makes the wiring much simpler. Simply wire from the GPO output pins coming up on this Rasp I.O. board here, and they're wired across onto this breadboard to the inputs of the driver chips, and from there they go to the solenoids, which are mounted on the back of the hammer assembly. You can see them just uh, under there, and when the solenoid moves up like that, it's going to hit the hammer, cause it to come down and hit the key, and then it's returned by its spring. It's a little adjustment you can make with it because of the rubber band. You can adjust the gap between the solenoids and the hammer, and it's also possible just to tweak the springs slightly if they've not quite got the right tension. Um, they don't all have to be at exactly the same height. You will see that there's one pin here, one hammer which is a bit lower than the others, but it still works okay. So much then for the construction. Um, we have an external 5 volt power supply which uh, drives the solenoids. Uh, don't attempt to drive it off the same one as the driving the Raspberry Pi, which probably won't be able to cope with both of them. But this works well. You'll notice also that there's three LEDs on the board which are just wired to three more input pins and these are driven by OSC information once again from the um, uh, received, received from signals coming from Sonic Pi. The red one is going to blink each time uh, any one of the uh, hammers is fired. The other two are going to signify the key which is currently operating on the glockenspiel. Uh, it normally comes um, in C major from a C at the bottom there, up a complete octave, and then up to uh, an A of the following octave. But there are some replacement keys you can use, two which are on F sharp. And if you change the F uh, notes with the F sharps, then that will obviously play in G major. And there is one which is marked um, A sharp, which is the same as B flat. And if you place that one in instead of the B key, then it'll play in F major and uh, you can then adjust the tuning depending upon what you're actually playing. So let's just see this in operation. At the moment I've got a program up here which is going to receive from MIDI input coming from my um, mini keyboard there and I can use this to play the glockenspiel directly. Um, we have um, a script in Python which is set up and ready to run here and if I just adjust the input of this, it's called uh, Osglockenspiel2. And I'm actually putting in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi that it's running on. 
um, you can use local hosts there but because I sometimes drive this from a separate Mac um, I put in the actual IP address here so it can respond also to input from external machines so we'll start that running uh, like that hopefully there we go and that now says that it is serving on that particular address to port 8000 and if we switch back to the Raspberry Pi program which is underneath you can see that it is set up to send OSC information to that same address port 8000 here's where we adjust the keys at the moment I got it set up for C major so it's all the white keys or the silver keys as we've got here none of the replacement uh, black ones and we're going to start that program running, which I'll do here. And we can then play this using the keyboard here. And if I just play some notes, you can hear the effect here and we can see the effect. You didn't play chords. So that shows that it works and if we now switch uh, we can use this where we can get Sonic Pi to play something and to accompany the um, uh, glockenspiel by playing notes uh, in Sonic Pi in the normal manner. There's one further gotcha which you need to take account of and that is that um, you will find that um, there is a latency in the audio coming out of the standard Raspberry Pi and it's quite severe. It's about 0.3 seconds. So when we come to send information to the um, glockenspiel, we need to delay it by 0.3 seconds. You can see I've got sleep real time 0.3 seconds. The RT just means that if we alter the beats per minute then that stays constant at 0.3 seconds and we delay the output to the glockenspiel so that it allows for the fact that it takes a bit of time for the audio to respond when the sonic pi plays a note and that way they both play in synchronism together so let's start this running and listen to the result Scottish country dance music <coughs> or folk music. You can hear the piano accompaniment on Sonic Pi and you can see the um, glockenspiel playing the piece concerned. can switch to perhaps one other one um, I think we have one here which is in the key of um, G major let's load that one in and to do that we need to change the key and so I'm going to pull the glockenspiel out I'm going to take off the G key which is here and I'm going to take the F sharp key here and replace it like that. Um, I could do the top one again but I happen to know that it doesn't go as high as that so to save time I'm not going to change that key as well. We'll just change the bottom one because it's going to use the bottom part of the glockenspiel to play. And that's ready set to go. You can see that in the code it says set key to key of G there and we'll see when I start running that it puts on the blue lead to signify that that is the key which is set. So let's start that for running. Here we go. You can see the blue leg on there. Oops. It sounds horrible. 
and the reason is that I've actually replaced the wrong key. I've put it on the G instead of the F sharp. And so let's just change that back again. We'll put the F sharp down there. There we are. And we'll put the G in the correct place. And now the notes are where we expect them to be. We'll put the back back, back again. Instead of the rather horrible sound we had before, it should work this time. So let's play that. Here we go. That's a bit better. So there we have it, uh, my Glockenspiel Mark II for Sonic Pi, and it plays very nicely on this um, Glockenspiel. And if you'd like to have a go at making one yourself, the whole thing is written up on my website on rbnrpi.wordpress.com, and there'll be a link to that underneath the video. Hope you've enjoyed watching this. Uh, goodbye.